Hallelujah. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. He's making me a testimony. Come on, I might be going through right now. But there's a testimony on the other side of this. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I love him tonight. Hallelujah. He's making us a testimony. Yes, Lord. Of his great power. What he's able to do. So that my soul loves him tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. My soul makes her boast in the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. The humble shall hear their all and be glad. Yes. Oh, magnify. Yes. I'm going to get out of your way in just a few moments. But oh, magnify. Yes. The Lord with me. Yes. And let us exalt his name together. I said, oh.
Because the more, the more that time goes by, the more that I know about him, and the closer that I get to him, and the more that I love him. Because every time the Lord shows you something and proves something to you or reveals something to you, 
you go to a greater level of appreciation, Amen. another level of gratitude, Amen. and another level of love for him. Yes. And so I honor the Lord Jesus Christ for all that he's doing. And so we want to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so if you have a burning question tonight, praise the Lord. Amen. We want you to go ahead and we want you to raise your hand tonight and ask that question. We want somebody to monitor the live to see if any of our brethren on uh, Facebook Live who's watching, if they have a question, by the help of the Lord, we want to try to get as many questions out of the way that we can tonight and give you, in, in the words of the late, late Bishop Drury, give you a Bible answer. Amen. We want to give you a Bible answer. Amen. We want to be able to take you to the word of the Lord and give you what the say of the Lord. Amen. That which is written in the word of God. Amen. Because the Bible declares, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. So let me see all the questions in the house tonight. Amen. Lift, lift up your hand tonight if you have a question. Amen. And we're going to get an order. Amen. In Jesus' name. And then we'll get those questions out of the way. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. We're going to, we have a few questions in the, in the sanctuary. Some individuals are working on getting it. Um, so we're, we're going to start, amen, by the help of the Lord. We're going to start with Minister David. Amen. In Jesus' name. Grace and peace. Grace and peace be multiplied. So my question is um, it's in Psalms 147. I'm going to just read. Up to verse 1, 13. 13 is the one I'm focusing on. I'm just going to read verse 1, 1 through 13 for context purposes. Psalms 147. It says, Psalms 147. Psalms 147. And it says, Praise you, the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. The Lord doeth build up Jerusalem. He gathered together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken heart and bind up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord in of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord hath lifted, lifted up the meek and cast the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the heart of our God. Who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He gives to the beasts his food, and to the young ravens which cry, which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horses, he taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem, praise thy God, O Zion. We have strengthened, strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed, it, blessed thy children with, within thee. So my question is in regards to um, verse 13. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates, yet blessed the children within thee. I want to get an understanding in regards to what does it mean by strengthening the bars of thy gates. Yeah, verse. All right. So, he's, so we know that that um, we know that Israel is the focus, right? Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem! Praise thy God, O Zion! For He hath strengthened out the bars of thy gates; He hath blessed thy children within thee. All right. So now, when you Look at Israel naturally, and then you actually do a study in the scripture. Jerusalem was uh, surrounded by multiple gates, Amen. right? When you, when you think about the king's palace, when you think about all of the, the, the structures of Jerusalem, gates were a very uh, prominent thing in that day and time. Um, and when you think about what a gate signifies, a gate signifies security, yeah. right? And so um, when, when something is gated in or something that is fenced in, is gated in or is fenced in for protection. And so um, 
when you begin to look at um, all of these things, um, then you'll be able to understand that God is saying that he has strengthened the bars of thy gates, which means that your protection is not coming from only the natural things that you've set in place to protect you. But I am your protection. Sometimes there are measures that we take and we call these things um, or there, there are additional measures that we take for security and we call these reinforcements, right? Sometimes we reinforce things in order to make sure that it's really secured, right? So you'll you lock your doors and you trust that the locks on your doors are going to protect you from intruders coming in. But then we'll go and we'll still go get ADT, alarm system, and put on our houses in order that if somebody get past the locks, mm -hmm. that the alarm will go off and it will reinforce that security. And so... Um, even though you may have security, this is what God is telling Israel, even though you may have security within yourself because of the people that you are, but remember that I am your protection. And so I've strengthened thy gates. I've, I've caused you to really be protected. Why do you think when, when, when the same uh, individual that is talking here, he, he goes into another um, writing and he says, he says that the Lord is my shield. The Lord is my buckler. The Lord is my fortress. Right? He starts talking like that. My high tower. You know, all those types of things. And, and my, my pavilion. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and when you look at all of those words, like pavilion, fortress, and uh, strong tower, high tower, and, and you start looking into all of those types of things, shield, and and buckler, you look at all of these types of things, you know that all of these things are things that protect, things that secure. And so, um, even though you may, praise the Lord, have these natural securities, you got to ultimately understand where your source of strength and your source of security comes from. And that is from our great God. And I will say, that's why I said, lift up your head, O ye oh, gates. Yes. And be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? And, and that's just not a saying. This They say these things to remind them of who their protector is. Right? Who is the Lord? He's the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord God that is mighty Amen. in battle. Amen. Right? He's our defender. Amen. What's that song say? Great defender? Yes. Right? He's our defender. He's our, he's our protection. He's our all in all. And so you'll find things being said poetically in these ways to remind the people of really who is their protector, who is their strength. And so that's simply what it means, that the Lord, ultimately, he is their protector. And so we have reminded them uh, of where they uh, should be looking to, right? And one, one writer said, I look to the hills from which come my help, my help coming from the Lord, right? And so there were certain it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, that, that, that the Lord is coming from this particular hill or that particular hill. But it's telling us just to know that wherever we look, we can find help from the Lord. Right? Because that's where um, our help coming from. Our help and our strength coming from the Lord and Him only. So it's a, it's a solemn reminder of that truth. All right? Amen in Jesus' name. Amen. And of course, you know, he has blessed our children, you know, and, and that's self-explanatory. And, and, um, and so we, we got to go into all that. Amen. Amen. But that's what that means. In, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And so you got to clap. clap, 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 clap. <laughs> Praise, the Praise the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. All right. Sister Sweeney. Grace and peace. Grace and peace be multiplied. We went over this scripture quite a few times. But right. I have a question. It's coming from 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, 
verses 11 through 13. And my question is going to come from verse 13. All right, first Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Amen. First Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Fifth chapter, verse number 13. All right. Amen. First Corinthians 5 and 13. But them that are without God judge it. 5, 11 to 13. 1 Corinthians 5, 11. 5, 11 to 13. Amen. Amen. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called the brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or an railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one not know not to eat. For what have I do? What for, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without God judge it. Yes. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Amen. Amen. So my question is, he's talking to the church. Yes. And oftentimes there are things that can go on in the church and People have different struggles and stuff, right? Right. And then there's another scripture that tells you to um, admonish your brother. Amen. At what point do you cut off a person? Like when it said put away that wicked one. That wicked person. Mm -hmm. At what point is it like that's it? Right. It's, and even at that point, is it possible for that wicked person to come back into the fold? Amen. So, let us go over to also um, 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 I want to alright so let's do this first let's lay this foundation sin oh it's, it's in the it's, it's in the the, the beginning part of this same chapter is what I want. Um, but let's lay this foundation, right? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We by nature were sinners Amen. and we needed a Savior. Amen. Come on, can anybody testify to that? Born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We inherited a nature that we became subjected to because of one man's disobedience. Amen. We didn't ask for it. We uh, didn't want it, didn't desire it. It was imposed upon us against our will. Amen. And so as we come into life and develop, the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the child. Yeah. But the rod of correction would drive it far away from him. Yeah. And so what happens is we need direction and we need guidance. Yeah. Train up a child in the way that he should go. That way when he gets older he won't depart from it. So we need training and we need guidance. We need to be told right from wrong yeah. so that we can tame that wild nature. Yes, so we can, we can put a trump hold to that carnal nature. Yeah. Because if not, that carnal nature will run wild with us. And so, as we grow and as we develop and we end up turning our lives over to the Lord Jesus Christ by repenting, which is to turn away from and turn toward, turning away from sin and turning toward God in repenting, now we must abandon what we have known all of our lives, which is sin. And even though we've now turned from sin and we turn toward God, Paul 
snaps us back into reality by saying that when I would do good, evil, evil is always present. When I look within my members, I see two things at war with one another. I see the spirit of Christ that I've now received warring against the spirit of my mind. Or, or warn against my flesh. Right. Or warn against that nature that I've been taught to suppress. Right. Because he's been crucified with Christ. And he's been buried. Yeah. But every now and again, he's trying to resurrect. Yeah. He's trying to come alive in me again. So I must die daily. Because the life that I now live in the flesh, I live it unto the Son of God who loved me and died for me and gave his life for me. Yes, sir. And so I got to crucify that flesh. Right. I got to mortify the deeds of this body. Right. I, I got to kill that joker. Yeah. If not, he's going to live on, and he's going to run wild. Right. So within every last one of us from the poor we have, we have a man that we must keep dead. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. And so in that, we are all capable of allowing that old man to live. Yes, sir. And so what ends up happening is, is that we now war continuously, not against one another, we walk continuously against our will and his will. Our thoughts and his thoughts. His ways and our ways. And we're in constant conflict because that's what war is. And so in that if we stop fighting and warring that nature that God wants to be suppressed, he'll resurrect. He'll take over. And then what he'll do is he'll overtake you. He'll overtake you. And once you are overtaken by something, see, the Bible says you are spiritual if what is overtaken in a fall, it is your responsibility to restore that individual. Right? Not just has committed a fault or has a fault, but has been overtaken by that fall, consumed by that fall. Meaning that they are now overly indulging in the thing that they want to us abstaining. And it has gotten them to the point that they're no longer fighting nor resisting it. See, God, God never in his word condemned individuals for, and I want to make sure I say this so that nobody will take it the wrong way. He never condemns anybody for having the struggle because he knows that the struggle is there. He tells us that that war is there and it's going to be there yeah. until the deliverer comes to redeem us out of these bodies where that war will cease. So he doesn't condemn us for the war or for the struggle, but he condemns us when we give over to that struggle. Amen. And that is the reason why he said that the Holy Ghost, which is the Pericletus, which is the helper. Yeah. He said, I'm going to come and I'm going to help you. I'm going to be the comforter. I'm going to be your helper. I'm going to help you fight against that which is inside of you. But in order for me to help you fight against that which is inside of you, I must come inside of you so that I can combat him head on. You got me? So when we stop allowing the Holy Ghost to fight, and we begin to give over to that desire, and we begin to give over to that old man, and we're no longer suppressing that old man, 
we can be overcome by him. And actually, you know, we're no longer fighting against it. We're just doing it. And then we're just doing it with no type of conviction. And we're doing it with no type of conscience that, hey, this is wrong. And we're no longer feeling remorseful or, or upset about it or, or, or any type of way about it. If you can sit and feel good, there's a problem. My God. Right? right? There's a problem. Which is what got them to this point. First Corinthians. Fifth chapter. Verse number one. Let's start there. And now we're going to see the context of it. And how this how this individual has gotten to this place to have to be excommunicated from the church. Amen. Listen to this. First Corinthians five and one. Yes. It is reported commonly. It is reported commonly. Stop right there. Yes, sir. Commonly. Commonly. Yes, sir. This is normal. Amen. This ain't just a mishap. Come on, sir. This ain't just you know sometimes. I'm going strong, and then I fall, I fall, but I pick myself up, and I keep on going, and maybe a year later, I might stumble again. No, no, no. This, this, is, this is a common thing. Yeah. Meaning, it's, it's more consistent and more frequent than it ought to be. Right. Listen to this. It is reported commonly. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. That there is sexual immorality yes, sir. among you. Come on, sir. There is some illicit sexual activity happening among you. Come on, sir. Commonly. My Jesus. It's reported commonly. It keeps going on. Uh -huh. Right? And so, this fornication is among you. Uh -huh. And it's, it's just not just the normal. Right. Y'all see this? Yeah. Because he said, and such. Yes, sir. And yeah. such. It, it, it ain't just right there, look. Right? And it's regular fornication. It's 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 it's, it's, it's including wow. certain parties that it normally don't include. Alright? Look at the nature of this. Jesus. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. It's not even named among the Gentiles. Come on. Those that are not God's people. Come on, sir. It's they're not even doing this stuff. Jesus. You know. And, and, and granted, they, they probably are, but it ain't as common as what I'm hearing y'all doing. Come on. Yeah. And such fornication Come on, sir. that is not so much as named among the Gentiles. That one should have his father's wife. That there is a brother in the church sleeping with his own father's wife. Come on, sir. Not in the world, in the church. Jesus. Now, because they don't go into great detail uh -huh. of who the father's wife is, yeah. we can only assume that it's one or two things. Either it is his mother, which fornication, the Greek word pornea, which would include adultery and incest Amen. and bestiality. Amen. So there's a possibility that incest is happening. Right. That this son is sleeping with his own mother. Jesus. Sleeping with his own mother. Jesus. Or because of the nature, he didn't, the Paul don't say he's sleeping with his mother, but he says he's sleeping with his father's wife. So then we can conclude or suggest that it's not his biological mother. Uh -huh. His biological mother might not be in the picture any longer. <laughs> Maybe she's deceased. Right. And now his father has remarried somebody else, and now this is his, what we would call, stepmother. Jesus. But whether it's his biological mother or whether it is his stepmother, it is violating the law of God and it is fornication. Amen. Whether it be incest or whether it be adultery on her part and fornication, on his part, it all falls under the same umbrella. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we don't know if it's his biological mother or if it's just his father's <laughs> new wife. All right? But he's sleeping with her. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the issue. He's sleeping with her. And he keep on sleeping with her. Jesus. He won't stop sleeping with her. He just keep on doing it. Verse number two, 
is going to now show us how Paul has gotten to this place. Yes. Listen to this. Verse number two. And ye are puffed up. And ye are puffed up. Mm. And have not rather mourned. And you have not rather mourned. That he that have done this deed. That he that has done this deed. Might be taken away from you. Might be taken away from among you. Amen. For verily, for five early. You're puffed up. Come on, sir. You are. You're not mourning. You're not remorseful. You're not sorry for that is going on. You just let it happen, and you got to the place where you don't care. So you just allow it to be. So because of this, you you not pray to the Lord that this individual be taken away among you that 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 he won't contaminate the church. Just you just let it go. So now something has to be done. Amen. Verse number three. For I verily. For I verily. As absent in the body. As absent in the body. But present in spirit. But yet I'm present in spirit. Have judged already. I thought you couldn't judge nobody. Come on, sir. They tell the church, you judge folks and preachers, you can't judge nobody. Amen. But Paul said, I'm not even there in the physical, but I've judged already. My Lord. We've been given righteous judgment. We have, we the church, and I ain't got time to go into it all tonight, but we the church have been given the judgment of God. Yes, sir. We're supposed to judge matters in the church. Amen. We're supposed to, not in the world. Amen. The world won't be the world, but we have been given the judgment to judge what goes on in the church. Amen. I know folks scared. I know they tell you just pray, shut up. Let folk do what they want to do. But we've been given judgment. Amen. We have the right to show forth when somebody's wrong. Amen. And, and we got the right to correct it and deal with it in hopes that they will repent. Amen. In order that reconciliation might take place. Yes, sir. So listen to this. For well, I verily. Well, I verily. As absent in body. Absent in body. But president spirit. President spirit. Have judged already. Judged already. As though I were present. As though I was present. Concerning him that have so done this deed. Concerning the individual him that have done this deed. Verse number four. Yes. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When ye are gathered together. When you are gathered together. In my spirit. In my spirit. With the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. With the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. To deliver such an one unto Satan. Deliver such a one unto Satan. For the destruction of the flesh. For the destruction of the flesh. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Give him over to the adversary. Jesus. Let the devil do what he want with him. Jesus. Let the messenger of Satan buffer him. Until it brings him to the place of repentance so that in the day of the Lord he might be saved. Yes, sir. Let him go through whatever affliction and difficulty that he has to go through in order that it might bring him to repentance. Amen. All right? So deliver him to Satan yes. for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord. Yes, sir. Now, verse number six. Yes, sir. Your glorying is not good. You see what they've done? Uh -huh. They were puffed up. Uh -huh. They were puffed up. Yes. They were not mourning. Yes. And the Bible said they were glorying. Yes. In other words, they were allowing it to happen and were just talking about like it was just like a thing. It was okay. My God. So because of this, extreme measures now have been implemented. Awesome. Give that one over to Satan so that he might destroy him so that in the day of the Lord his spirit might be saved. Uh, verse number seven. The verse number six. Your glory is that good. Know ye not? Know ye not? That a little leaven? That a little leaven. Leaveneth the whole lump? A little leaven. Leaveneth the whole lump. Yes, sir. So now he's saying that one incident of this nature, one incident of this nature <coughs> has the ability to corrupt everybody. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. 
This one little thing has the, the ability to destroy everything. So, a little leaven, it ain't gonna be, no, it ain't gonna be a whole bunch of stuff. A little leaven will leaven the whole lot. Listen to this. Verse number seven, purge out therefore the old leaven. So purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump. So that you might be a new lump. As ye, as ye are unleavened. So purge out the old leaven. Yes, sir. Get that from among you. So that you might be renewed. Amen. Right? Get it out from among you. So the Bible says, Purge it out, mm -hmm. that old leather, that you may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. Yes, sir. For even Christ. For even Christ. Our Passover. Our Passover. Is sacrificed for us. Is sacrificed for us. Yes, sir. Listen. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with old leaven. Not with old leaven. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. Neither with the leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And truth. Yes, sir. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornication. Now he's going to get into the part that we've been brought to. Amen. But we had to go see why he's got to that place. Yes. There's no repentance. There's no remorse. There is pride yeah. surrounding the sin that has been committed. Amen. God hates pride. Amen. It's rooted in pride. Puffed up. Yeah. No remorse. There's no conviction. Godly sorrow. Worketh repentance. Yeah. You got to feel sorry for what you've done. Amen. You can't. You can't repent if you don't feel bad for what you've done. Amen. That's why so many people can't repent. Come on. Because they don't feel bad about what they did. I mistreated you. I mishandled you. I abused you. I did something to you, but I don't feel bad about what I did. And because I don't feel bad. For what I did, I feel like I don't need to repent because I felt like I was right in doing what I did, no matter how wrong it was. So pride kicks in, and pride keeps them from repenting, and because they will not repent, God will not forgive. Because you can't, you can't think that God's just gonna forgive you without repentance. Amen. It's pride. Pride didn't set in. Yeah. Jesus. Pride didn't kick in. And, and so, because of pride, uh -huh. because pride, I mean, pride is a terrible thing. Amen. Yeah. And because of this pride, God will ultimately give you over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. And he will even then tell us if things get to that point of being so bad. He will tell us to not even look at you like a saint no more. Jesus. He will say, don't even look at it like a saint no more. Right. Remember Jesus said, he said, if, if, if your brother has done something to you, go to your brother and him alone. Tell him his fault. Right. If he won't hear you, take two, or two other people with you. Two or three other people with you. Have, have witnesses, let them go with you. If, if he refuses, notice the language. If he refuses yeah. to hear them, right. now you got you got you got three or four people telling you all are telling you that you're wrong, mm -hmm. and you still refuse to hear them. The Lord, He's trying to have grace. Right. He said, "All right, they won't hear them. Bring it before the entire church." Amen. Bring it before everybody. Ain't no keep on sweeping stuff under the rug. Amen. Ain't no keep this concealed. Amen. Ain't no not talk about it. Just pray. Come on. Jesus said, bring it before the church. Yeah. Why? Because he's committed judgment to the church. Yeah. 
church has a right to judge the matter. Read 1 Corinthians 6 chapter. The church has a right to judge the matter. The Bible says, do you not know that the righteous, the saints of God are going to judge angels? So why can't you judge the little matters that are among you right now? Amen. He's committed judgment unto us. So you got to stand before the council of the church and be judged for what you do. So the Bible says, he was hard-headed, stubborn, stiff-necked, hard-hearted, wouldn't hear you, wouldn't hear the two or three other people that you brought with you to tell them that it was wrong. Then you bring them before the entire body, bring them before the church, yeah. and now he will not hear the church. Oh Jesus said, if he will not hear the church, he still won't repent. You count that individual as a publican yep. and a heathen. Yep. In other words, you don't, don't even call them brother and sister no more. Don't even look like them as a saint no more. Because now you got to look at the individual like the heathen that they've become because they've allowed pride to kick in and they refuse to repent. Look at them like a publican. Heathen man. Don't even, don't, even, don't, don't even look at the individual no more like a brother in Christ because I, I tried to have grace and I tried to have mercy and I tried to go through all of the channels to bring about that reconciliation, but you won't have it. Right, right. Because your pride has gotten you. What did God say about pride? He, re, he rejects the pride. He, he rejects the pride. Those that are proud, he rejects. But he giveth more grace to the humble. Yes, that's right. Right? So if you're prideful, God can't do nothing with you. God got to reject you. He rejects the proud. And if God rejects the proud, then the church got to reject the proud. And we got to look at the individual like a heathen until Satan get a hold to him. Work him over a little bit. And maybe bring him to you. He gonna let, he gonna take you to every channel. He gonna let your brother deal with you. He gonna let some more brothers deal with you. Then he gonna let the entire body deal with you. He gonna then classify you as a heathen, and then he gonna give you to Satan. Let him deal with you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my lord! And say after Satan dealt with you, maybe you'll repent now. Hey, hey. Mm. So that's what happened here. My God. This individual was they were too prideful, too arrogant, yes, too high minded. And, and they got to a place where none of the none of the efforts that were put in it wasn't working. It wasn't working. Paul said, "I tried. I I, I, I wrote the letter. I done told you what to do." And this individual still won't get it together. He said, "But therefore, if they won't get it together, get that wicked one from among you." Put them out from your midst. Because of that little leaven, leaven the whole lot. If he gets away with it, then she got to get away with it. And if she got to get away with it, she got to get away with it. And if she get away with it, he got to get away with it. And next thing you know, you have a whole house full of sinners committing all types of sin and justifying it based upon what another one got away with. Right. Mm-hmm. Why are you saying something to me, but you ain't say nothing to her? Oh, why are you saying something to me? You ain't say nothing to him. And so that's what happens when you show partiality. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't treat everybody the same way. Right. When, when you have one standard for this crew and another standard for this crew, but you don't have the same standard all across the board. Right. Some people don't even know that partiality is sin. Amen. You let your house get away with it, but then you condemn folks in the You better talk. That's the one. That's the one. Right. You justify it when you do it, but then you rebuke others when they do it. Hypocrites. Amen. That's hypocrisy. That's how hypocrisy kicks in. That's when hypocrisy rises because it's rooted in partiality. That's the only got a bunch of hypocrites walking around. Yeah. Walking around. Flopping around. Mm. A bunch of peacocks in the house of God. Mm. Proud. Peacock. That's the one. Colorful. Yeah. Painting. Flashing. I mean, bold and beautiful, yes, sir. Yes, sir. full of pride, and, and, 
and, and pride don't got nothing to do with what you got on. Amen. Come on, let me lay the foundation Amen. here. Amen. It has nothing to do with what you got on. Amen. You can wear some of the most plainest clothing mm -hmm. that didn't cost much money at all and still be full of pride. Amen. Because pride like to have its own way. Pride looks at itself in a certain light that God doesn't look at you like. Amen. Jesus. Full of pride. A lot of folk walking around here and because they don't wear no jewelry. Come on, you talking. Okay. 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 Just because you ain't got no diamonds and no pearls and no gold and because you ain't got no earrings and no necklaces on. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. No bracelets on. You think that you're not full of pride but you are plain Jane pride to our outside that somehow it deals with our inside but you got to clean the inside and the outside Amen. Oh, the because some folk go to the car wash praise the Lord running through the car wash look good on the inside the outside but when you go inside got cookie crumbs don't they gonna talk to me tonight praise the Lord got Cheetos from two years ago hallelujah all in the dashboard sticky juice wasted Breeze won't even kill the odor that's in there. Jesus Christ. So true. That's what the, that's why the Lord had to rebuke the Pharisees and Sadducees. He said, "You want the whitewashed? You're like the tombs of them." Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're they're decked up with gold. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They got all this fancy stuff for the coffin, but when you're all outside, that coffin is shining. It's clean. It's beautiful. But when you open it up, it ain't nothing in there but dead men's bones. It's stinking there. There's decay in there. There's corruption in there. And so many people walk around the church like that today. Amen. A dressed up mess. My God. Full of hell in their heart. Come on, they'll talk to me tonight. Got the long skirts on, got the head color print, don't see not a stitch of hair. That's all. But when you open up that mouth, we see all the hell that's in your heart. You're talking. Talk you talking right? Ain't not a stitch of hair out, praise the Lord. And you think you sanctify, but when you open up that, that mouth, that it's that mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth don't speak. Out of that heart, praise the Lord. If you let a person talk long enough, they gonna speak. It's on their heart. My brother said, "The wise old house, son of the oak." The more he heard, the less he spoke. Mm -hmm. The more, the, the, the more, the more he heard, the less he spoke. And 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 sometimes you gotta hear and don't hear. Amen. You gotta see don't see and don't see. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because right. 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 the more you hear, the more you discern, mm -hmm. the more you gonna keep hearing. And you will start getting some wisdom because you start seeing people for who they really are. Amen. Because that mouth will get you in trouble. Sure will. It sure will. That's why the Bible said, tame that tongue. Yes, sir. Brighter that tongue. And can't nothing brighter than but the Holy Ghost. Amen. That thing's so terrible, Sister Sweeney. The Bible said every, every creature of man has the ability to be tamed. You can tame a lion. The Bible said it's easier for a lion to be tamed in that tongue. Jesus Christ. Said, said in that tongue, it's a small member. He said, but that thing deadly. It's full of deadly poison. And that thing is set on fire of hell. Jesus. The Bible said it's an unruly evil. Mm. Unruly evil. And all type of stuff will come out of that mouth. And, and but but what's gonna come out of that mouth is what's in that heart. Amen. Because out of the heart comes murder, uh -huh. strength, and sedition, yeah. and all of this type of stuff, fornication, all this type of stuff. It's gonna come out of that heart. And that mouth is only gonna manifest what's in that heart. Amen. So if you done cleaned up the outside, dressed up the outside, uh -huh. but you never got to that heart. Yes, 
Yes, sir. Let's believe with that head covered and all, yep. that foolishness is going to come. You be, carrying, you be carrying the most confusion on in the church, but trust the Holy Spirit. You better talk, sir. You better talk. You'll be dressed, I mean, you'll be dressed, and you look the part, folk look at you, and they just think, come on, we can, because we had a lot of them here. Come on, sir. And they still dress it like they hold. Come on, sir. You look at them on the outside, boy, you play up. Huh? How about the hell they put up? The lies they tell. Jesus. I ain't just talking about people in the pew. I'm talking about people in the pool. Baby. Come on, you talking? Lying preachers, my lord, dumb dogs that can't bark. Oh, yeah. Come on. That's what the book said. Yeah. Amen. Come on, that's what the book said. Amen. Dumb dogs. Some of these preachers ain't nothing but dumb dogs. Amen. With not now bitter bark. Nothing. And if they can't bark, you know they can't bite. Come on, sir. Come on, praise the Lord. They have no choice but to get quiet because they dumb dogs that can't bark. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Jesus. Not a dog that can't bark. There's something wrong with them. Come on, praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And, and it's the nature of a dog to bark. Yes, sir. And, and when the dog don't bark, typically the reason why it don't bark is because there's an impediment there or they've been trained to do that. Yeah. Oh, you, you can shoot the train the dog got to bark. Yeah. 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 So some some dogs has been trained not to bark. Praise the Lord. Yeah. 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 Alright. So you gotta be you gotta be ever so careful because that tongue can get you in trouble. Yeah. Something that tongue can get you in some good I mean good trouble. Yeah. Right? And, and and when that tongue is so bad. I mean, mingle with pride. Yeah. That, that individual is dangerous. That's a dangerous individual. Because they don't feel like whatever comes out of their mouth, right. they don't have to account for it. Right, you're talking. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. That's what the Lord warns us of this stuff. Yeah. That's why he tells us, examine ourselves. Yes, sir. I mean, look down in your heart. Make sure, make sure you have not gotten comfortable in sin. Amen. Oh, I'm going to share something with you all that the Lord shared with me when I first got saved. When I first got saved and, and every day I was walking with the Lord and I knew the Lord had called me to the ministry and I was wrestling with fulfilling his call to the ministry but I knew eventually I was going to submit to it. And see, God is a God. I mean, he gives you simple instructions. God, see, these people want to be so deep yeah. and revelatory and that they got this, you know, Deep word from God. God will give you some simple stuff. Yeah. Simple instructions are by and by. Lord gave me these simple instructions. And the instructions went like this. He said to me, he said, never let me stand right here because I'm going to help somebody that's watching too. He said, never sanctify your struggles mm. and never sanction sin. And I live by those my entire walk with God. Never sanctify your struggles yeah. and never sanction sin. Wow. Look at folk today sanctioning things that God has called sin. And they say, oh, God don't care. Right. It ain't sin. He, he knew the hearts of the people, Brother Jeffrey. And he said, never get to that place. I don't care if I come in. It's still sin. Amen. I ain't got no witnesses in Amen. Here. I fall into it, it's still sin. Amen. For some folk who let their leader find themselves in something, and then when he do it, then they try to sanctify it. You're talking right, sir. You're talking right. Now they try to sanction it. If I tell a lie, it's still a lie. Amen. Apostles in front of your name, prophets in front of your name. Amen. If you tell a lie, it's a lie. Amen. And if you keep on lying, you become a liar. Amen. And if they lie, they won't have this part in the lake of fire. The lake of fire. Jesus. Yes, sir. Keep on lying. Jesus. Keep on telling lies, you liar. Come on, sir. 
That's what you will be. Now, folks, 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 folks will let folks tell us, preachers will let preachers tell a lie and let them keep speaking in tongues. Folks will get up and lie and you still follow them preaching. Jesus. And they act like because they turned a blind eye to it and didn't say nothing that God ain't going to do nothing to them. But the Bible said, oh, I, I, I want to drop this nugget there. I want to drop this nugget and I want to make sure I drop it real good. Bible said, not only them that do it, but them that have pleasure, pleasure. in it. Uh -huh. pleasure in a liar. You a liar, you just as guilty. You're yeah. guilty by association. Amen. Amen. Watch the company you keep. See, these folks don't read their Bibles. I'm so glad I came in a church. I came up in a church that made us read the word of God. Yeah. Only read the word of God just so praise the Lord that we were doing something, but so that we would know it and not only read it but live by it, yeah. apply it to your heart. See, because that's all the reason why some of us, praise the Lord, keep doing stuff that we want to do because we don't have the word hidden. Come on, but said, thy word, oh Lord, have I hidden in my heart so that I might not sin against you. If you don't know the word and you don't know the requirements, you can't live by them. Amen. That's true. Amen. Hide that word in your heart. That they got with me, Lord said, not only them that do it, then they have pleasure in them that do it. You ain't got to be the one actually committing it, but if you rejoice in it. Right, uh huh. Jesus. I would say rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. How you say amen to a lie? Come on, my Lord. Let me get out of here with time to tell you. How you say amen to a lie? How you speak it in tongues over a lie? Come on, sir. That's the one. How you jumping and shouting no about There's something wrong with your spirit. Uh huh. Because the Holy Ghost in you is going to signify that something is off. Right. Mm -hmm. There's something called a there's something called a lie detector. Come on. And the Holy Ghost is a lie detector. Yes, How you speaking in tongues and shouting and dancing over a lie? Holy Ghost, you got when the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Truth. Yes, he knows all truth. Come on. Bible says hereby we know the Spirit of Truth and the Spirit of Error. Yeah. Right. Some folk got the Spirit of Error, calling it the Spirit of Truth. Uh, Blaspheming the Holy Ghost and don't even know they blaspheme. Uh, got an unclean spirit, calling it the Holy Ghost. Mm. Foreign spirit. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Let me get back to the original topic. You did. You did. You did. You did. That's what happens when you when you start running away with yourself. When you ain't got nobody to check you. Right, right, right. When you ain't got nobody to hold you accountable. Amen, amen. You do whatever you want to do. And and think you're getting away with it. Mm-hmm. But you think you're getting away with it now, but the Bible says every idle word. Amen. Y'all listening to that? Amen. Every idle word will be brought before you in the church. The Bible said, by your own words, you'll be justified or either you'll be condemned. Wow. You think God will have this whole long line you know, of people, you know, going through that list? God know what you said when you said it. Uh -huh. You know what you said when you said it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, will come right before you in the judgment yeah. and it's going gonna, it's gonna to condemn you or it's going to justify you. Yeah. Your own words, Jesus. your own actions, your own deeds. Are going to be the things that are going to get you. Right. And here's the thing that's going to get you the most. It ain't going to get it. The things that will get you the most are not the things that you show outwardly. Yeah, amen. It's going to be those things that you said in secret. Uh huh. You got to talk. You thought nobody knew about it. See, because a lot of folk got a bunch of character. Come because on. character is what you show the people. Come on. But you have character, but you have no, absolutely no integrity. Come on, sir. Because integrity is what you do and say when nobody's looking. Amen. Praise the Lord. Integrity is what you say. Are you an are you an integral person? Are you integral to your friends? Are you an integral person? How do you speak of people when they're not in your presence? Right. What type of conversation do you have about them mm -hmm. when they're not in your presence? And I'm not talking about the normal conversations that we had. Mm -hmm. Because all of us talk about situations. Amen. Especially us that are in leadership, we gotta talk about situations Amen. because things in the church happen and they gotta be discussed. Yes, sir. But it's the nature in which you're talking. Yes, Amen. Sir. Motive. Come on. What are you saying about your brothers and sisters 
why they're not there. When they're not present. When I'm not with Daniel, I'm over there talking about David. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm not joking, man. He be coming up in here with these little, you know, these little, these little characteristic socks and stuff. With his little, with his pants and his little jeans tied up, you know, like what somebody see them. So we think, yeah. He can dress or something, you know. He think he can dress, but he ain't all that. Amen. Then when I get over here with when I when I get over here with Daniel, then all of a sudden now, you know, yeah, man, David, man. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what do you think he's working on everything? He can sing or something. I don't know if he can sure. He's He sounded a mess to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know why he thinks. But you'd be surprised how many do that type of stuff right in the church. Amen. Right True. Right in the church, they carry all this foolishness. Yeah. Come on, sir. Say one thing to one person and go say something else to somebody uh -huh. else. So mm. And then they'll come into your presence purposely telling you something that you heard somebody else say about a person so they can keep this score going. On. Jesus. Mm. And, and nothing like a tail bearer. Mighty Lord. Ain't nothing like a busy body. Come on, sir. Other yeah, that, that, I was talking to David the other day. And man, yeah, man, he said he don't bang with you like that. Mm -hmm. What? Why? He said, man, he was just saying, man, you just be, you be talking on the side of your neck sometime, man. He don't know, he don't know what be going on with you. Oh, man, that man. Now, the reason why I be talking to David like that because David don't, David don't even know how to act, man. He be acting stupid sometimes. I be trying to wonder, I'm like, is he, is he slow? My God. He gave it, you know, I'm talking to Daniel over there. And then he told me, man, you don't know how to be, you don't even know how to act sometimes. Come on, sometimes he be wondering if you a little slow. I told him, man, no, I said, man, nah, you take it too far. They do that. Nah, he'll be acting slow. Nah, nah, nah. I, 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 can't, I can't be your defense, though. You'd be surprised how many people operate like that, and the majority of them are in the pulpit. Jesus. We got more people in the pulpit that sow discord among the brethren than those that are in the pew. That's right. That's right. We got more preachers that keep the saints divided yeah. Yeah. right in the churches that they pastor. Uh, yeah. I'm an eyewitness. Yeah. I've been in my God. I've been in places yeah. where people told us all of the business of their church. Talking. Wow. Yeah. Come on, see, see, sometimes you gotta break the silence. Yes. Yes. Talking right. We've been in places where folk that told us everybody business. Mm -hmm. Jesus. So I said, if, if they gonna do it to these folks, mm -hmm. they gonna do it to us. Right. You have to be careful, people that do that type of stuff. Because if you that comfortable telling me stuff about folk I don't even know. Right. Jesus. Right. Don't even know. What you gonna do to me? What you gonna do to me? You telling me your family members' business? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You telling me folk business? I didn't ask for that information. Right, right, right. You just you just offering it. Mm -hmm. So I already know to keep my lips shut and shut my mouth, and I tell you a damn old thing about me mm -hmm. because I already know that if you ever find out something about me. You won't tell every time Dick and Harry. Uh huh. Sometimes they'll, they'll try to get you with that, you know. I, I want to be a spiritual support. Uh huh. Okay. I want to counsel you. Uh huh. Manipulation. Come on. You try to pry into your marriage. Yeah. Try to find out what you got going on in your marriage yeah. so they can feel like they got some leverage. Yeah. Jesus. Let me get something that way. If anything ever happens, I'll have something on that. Yeah, and so, I'm the type of person. I, 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 come on, somebody say wisdom. Wisdom. Come on, the Lord doing some good teaching tonight. We get out of here. Just give me two more minutes. Wisdom. wisdom is key. One thing I do, Sister Sweeney, mm -hmm. that I've learned to do, I learned to give people bits and pieces mm -hmm. of a story. 
And sometimes I'll give them the bits and pieces of the story that's not favorable, and I'll leave context out of it just to see if the unfavorable part ever gets told to somebody. Right. So why you think you really got the real story, you really only got the part that I wanted you to have just to see if you'll go tell it. It was called bait. So you think you know something that you really don't know. See, I'll tell you something that happened in the beginning, and I'll tell you something that happened in the middle, but I'll never tell you how it ended. That way you have a preconceived notion of something, and you think you got something, in actuality you don't have anything. That's called wisdom. Not only is it called wisdom, somebody shout this, it's also called discretion. Discretion. Church gotta learn discretion. Right. Some stuff you gotta be discreet about. Some stuff you can't be blabbing your mouth off telling folk. Amen. Folk can't hold water. Amen. Blabber mouths. Jesus. Can't hold water. Can't hold nothing. Right. At the first chance that they get, they're gonna tell you. They're mm -hmm. gonna tell you. And then, see, these folks are so wicked that they'll tell parts of it and then they'll go exaggerate and add stuff to it. And I mean, they'll, sit, they'll fabricate their entire story. Take one bit that you gave them and they'll fabricate the rest. They'll build a narrative all the way around what you share with them. That's a wicked folk. Amen. So you gotta be wise, be discreet. Right? So the church had gotten to the place, these people had gotten to the place where they were prideful, they were arrogant, they were unrepentant. And Paul said, we got to do something for these folks. Get these folks out of the church. We don't preach that no more. We don't, we don't handle stuff in the church like that no more. We, we're in an age of grace. And so because we grace, 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 we done grace, grace, grace. And we done gave grace to folk that we should have And should have kicked their behinds out a long time ago. And here we are, grace, grace, grace. Love, you know, they say love is blind. For some, some, for some folk, we should have been dismissed and we just love, love, love. Grace, grace, grace. And the Lord been saying, now it's time for you. Turn that, turn that joker over right. to sink for the destruction of the flesh. Jesus. Because they're unrepentant, they're wicked. And so, when you get to that place, you get to a place where you're too far gone. Uh -huh. But if there's any sincerity in your heart, and any glimpse of a light that Christ can shine through, you'll wake up to the reality of your ways, and you'll repent. Yes. But if you don't repent, and the Spirit of Christ is no longer dealing with you, because the Spirit of Christ is not going to strive with us. He's not going to strive. He's not going to fight. That's one thing he ain't going to do. He ain't going to keep fighting, and you don't even want him, and you just keep rejecting him. You think he will stay and put up with what you do? No, he's not going to keep fighting with you. So he'll give you over. He'll give you over. He'll give you over to do those things that are not convenient. He'll let you go ahead and do it. He'll let you, he'll say, you know what? Go ahead and have your own way. And then when that happens, he'll turn you over to a reprobated mind. Oh, Jesus. And when he turns you over to a reprobated mind, and you finally get into that place of becoming a reprobate, mm -hmm. there's no way to bring you out of that. Yeah. Once you become a reprobate, it ain't no way to bring you out of that. So he'll still let you keep speaking in that tongue that you learned. Mm -hmm. That's why some folk don't get, they never speak in another tongue. Mm -hmm. They only speak in that same one that they received or the one that they heard and duplicated. My Lord. My Lord. Be careful a lot of the time of people that only duplicate tongues. Because yeah. they might be stuck. Yep. Right in reprobation. <laughs> because they cannot get access to the spirit of Christ like they used to. And so they're just a broken record repeated. Wow. And because they know what to do. Yeah. They just keep doing the normal formality thinking that God is with them. I heard this analogy a long time ago. said that after the bird leaves the limb, the limb still shaking. Yeah. And that's what so many people are doing. Holy Ghost no longer dealing with them, gave them over to a reprobated mind, but he's still quicken. Jesus. 
They still speaking in some type of tongue. They still doing all of this type of stuff. And then when that day comes, that's what Jesus said. And in that day, many shall say unto me, Lord, Lord, did we prophesy in your name? Did we cast out devils in your name? Did we do many wonderful works in your name? And then the Lord is going to profess to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. Jesus. <clears throat> See, because the Lord will allow you to keep operating. Even though he has withdrawn himself from you. You get to the place where God will do you like he did Saul. Uh -huh. And the Bible said the spirit of the Lord came from upon him. And an evil spirit from the Lord came upon him. And next thing you know, you all jacked up, messed up, don't know what in the world going on. And don't know, now you can no longer hear from the Lord. And then when you no longer can hear from the Lord, you still will see out your answer anyway. God wasn't speaking to Saul no longer through the prophets. And so he went and sought out a witch. Jesus. I ain't got time. I got to go home. You want to help us tonight? I got to get out of here. When you can't hear from the authentic voice of God, you will get a substitute. Oh, you start consorting with familiar spirits. Because God ain't talking to you no more. And so now you're speaking in some type of tongue, but the tongue that you're speaking is conjured up by a spirit that's not like God. Jesus. You telling the future, all right, but the source of what they're talking is not coming from God. You become like that young damsel with the spirit of uh -huh. yeah, sir. And because you no longer have a spiritual discernment, you're not, you're not able to discern whether it's the spirit of God or if that revelation is coming from another source. Jesus. Jesus. He told me about future. He sure did. But what spirit gave him that? Because everything that's telling the future ain't God. Amen. Your name and number out ain't God. Amen. Everything that is able to identify you is not God. Amen. The woman with the spirit of divination said, These be the men. Uh huh. Yeah. Jesus. The truth. These be the servants of the Most High God. And they've come to show us the way of salvation. She told the truth. She said it right. It was 100% accurate, but the revelation was coming from a different source. Jesus. And everybody jumping around and thinking because folks are working miracles. My God. I, can I get more? 11 o'clock, we're getting out of here. It's Friday night. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We think that because folks are working miracles, that the source of the miracle is God. But the Bible said, I've seen, I've seen three unclean uh -huh. spirits come out of the mouth. Praise the Lord of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. I've seen these unclean spirits. He said like frogs and they were jumping and they were going all over the earth to the kings of the earth. He said these be the spirits. Jesus. Of devils Jesus. working miracles. Uh -huh. Get caught up in it. Yeah. Get deceived by it. Because it's a spirit of devil working miracle. But you looking at the miracle instead of trying to find right. out the source of the miracle. I don't hop, skip, jump, shout, speak in tongue over every miracle that works. Come on. Come on, sir. So what you lay hands on somebody and they had a short leg and it grew out? Come on. That's not enough to move. See, y'all something to move. Come on. Yeah. That don't move me. Yes, sir. I'm not moved by somebody being raised from the dead. That don't move me. Come on, sir. I, 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 I am not moved because you baptized so many people or so many people received the Holy Ghost. So you say, I'm not uh -huh. moved by that because I understand and know that there could be another spirit in operation. Yes, sir. Oh, we raised the dead. But did you raise it up? Did you raise the dead by the power of God? Right. Jesus. Come on, sir. Or, or did you get that power from another source? Because the Bible said that spirit is so cunning and it's so powerful that, 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 that there was an image in the book of Revelation and that spirit gave power to that image to speak. Jesus. You can't underestimate the power of Satan. My God. Because that same power, look, look at this, and I'm going to let y'all go. My have to finish this up on Sunday. But you got to, you got to be ever so careful about individuals that have the ability to duplicate somebody else's ministry. My oh. God. You better oh. talk. Jesus. You better talk, sir. Chainers and champions. Oh, my God. Those were the majority.
Egypt. In the New Testament, they gave us a name. But in the Old Testament, they were just a magician. That withstood Moses. And they duplicated every miracle. Praise the name of our God. They duplicated every miracle that Aaron was able to do. So what we caught up in? We caught up in wizards. We caught up in sorcerers. Like the Bible didn't already tell us that such a false apostle deceitful and they turned themselves into the apostles of Christ. But don't think it's strange for Satan himself yes, has transformed himself into an angel of the light. And his ministers have transformed themselves into ministers of righteousness. We think that everybody that's calling on Jesus, talking about Jesus, baptizing in Jesus' name is of him. Come on, sir. But you dressed up devil, wolves in sheep clothing. Jesus. And we running and jumping, hollering and screaming. Foaming at the mouth, having men's person in admiration. Yeah, come on. Some of y'all so caught up in personality. Come on, sir. You caught up in who's likable. Mighty God. You caught up in who got who. And you caught up in fanfare. Yeah, come you on. You caught up in who's the most popular. Come on, sir. You caught up in, in, in who has the public's eye. Right. Mm. As if he that has the public eye is of God. Folks so foolish and blinded, yeah. dumb. That's what they are, just downright dumb. Just dumb. Deceived. Yeah. Because had some of these church folks been living in the days of Moses and saw those Egyptian magicians do what they did, they'd be, oh, God. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He threw down his rod. Yeah. 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 He threw down his rod. Turned into a serpent. Eric threw down the rod, turned into a serpent. The magicians threw down their rods, turned into serpents. Yeah. Look what happened. God said, you want to duplicate, do you? Mm -hmm. But this is what I'm going to let happen. I'm going to let, I'm going to let Aaron's serpent mm -hmm. swallow up and devour their serpents. I'm going to show you that my power still Come has on. miracles. Amen. You're thinking miracles. I'm going to give real miracles. Come I'm on. Real miracles. And I'm going to make sure that when I do something for real, it cannot be duplicated and it will override everyone that's trying to do God must swallow it up. Yes, sir. Mm. God, God let his power overshadow it to prove who's God. Yes, you can't get caught up in that. And the Bible said, just like Jambres and J J uh, uh, Janus and Jambres had, had withstood Moses, these men be brute beasts, always withstanding the truth, ever learning, but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. But they work in miracles, speaking in tongues, prophesying, casting out devils. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Oh, Pastor Black, how can it be casting out devils and not be of God? Because he said, in my name, yeah. they shall cast out devils. His name will drive that devil out. Mm -hmm. But it has nothing to do with the individual that's doing it. Amen. Jesus. Paul said, after I preach to others. I don't keep my body and put it under subjective after I preach to others. I myself be a cast away. Yes, you know how many preachers gonna go to hell and their members gonna make it into the kingdom? Right. Crazy. Crazy. Man, I, 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 he baptized, he preached me into the church, baptized me. I received the Holy Ghost under his ministry and he still be lost. Lord Jesus. Because none of us have a monopoly with God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus said, but I say the one I say to all. We all got to live by the same thing. Amen. And I mess up and I falter and I give over and I get overcome and I and I stop repenting and I get desensitized to the reality of sin in my life. Yes, sir. And I do what the Lord told me not to do, and I sanctify my struggles, and I sanction sin, right. I'll be lost, and I could have put on the greatest revival in the world. Right. Folks could have been filled with the Holy Ghost from the north, south, east, and the west. I could baptize up the wazoo and still be lost. Because at the end of the day, after I've done all of that, he still will make sure that did you live by the word right. or did you Amen. live by Amen. I still got to, that's what the Bible calls it, a two-edged sword. Yes, Stand all over the building so I can stop. Praise the Lord. It's called a two-edged sword. The word of God is powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged 
two-edged sword. Because that two-edged sword, go, go, it's going to cut going in, and it's going to cut coming out. When that word comes out of us preachers, it cuts us going out. Mm-hmm. We got to get it, but it's cutting us. Mm-hmm. When the Lord shows us something in the word that goes against us, it cuts us coming out. It cuts us coming out, it cuts you while it's going, and it's cut both ways. So God showed us that he has no respect of person. And nobody's getting by from his word. Put your hands together. Thank God for his word. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord God is all by itself. Praise the name of Jesus. And we thank God for his word. Thank God for every question that was asked tonight. And we pray that by the help of the Lord and by the word of God, we were able to give you an answer in Jesus' name. Come on. Interact with humanity. Um, So is there a hierarchy? With the angels, absolutely so. Um, with any army, there must be a commander of that army, right? And the angels are the army of the living God, right? They're called, when we talk about the Lord, we call him the Lord of hosts. And um, and when we talk about that, we deal with his, his innumerable a company of angels. And so because there is an innumerable a company of angels, that God has given someone charge over them. And so that's why we have one that is called the archangel. We call it the archangel. And that term, even though we look at that term sometimes in a negative, arch, because people have archbishop and stuff like that, the term is 100% correct and it is 100% biblical. Michael is called the archangel. And so... When we see, praise the Lord, him mentioned in Revelations, the 13th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, the Bible said, Michael and his angel mm-hmm. fought against Satan and his angels. Mm-hmm. So the Lord directly calls the angels Michael's angels. Michael being the archangel. Mm-hmm. And those are his angels because the Lord has given him charge over them. So he's called the archangel. That means he, he's above the rest of them. He's number one in command. And so when he began to war, it was Michael, the archangel, with his angels that warred against that great dragon. And so uh, the Bible does give us a hierarchy. And uh, as it relates to humanity, each of us have been assigned an angel. And each of us have an angel that has come to minister to us who are the heirs of salvation. But he maketh his, he maketh his minister spirit and he maketh them a flame of fire. And so they go about to and from ministering to those that shall be heirs of salvation. And so they deal with humanity by, by bringing us the word of God, helping us to be saved, even in prophecy and prayer the Lord takes the prayers of the saints to the throne of God. When God has a message for the church, he brings it by the hand of a mediator and brings it into the heart of man. And so angels are always at work in the life of believers. And so they interact with us in various ways through giving us messages and and things of that nature. And so uh, that's what the Lord told us to be be careful how we entertain strangers. Because some have entertained angels unaware. Sometimes the Lord will allow angels to manifest in in physical form like he did in the old, simply to deliver us, bring us out, supply a need for us. If if there's nobody in that facility, the Lord will send an angel in human form, bring you a bag of food, lay it on your porch, and you don't know where it came from. And so God will supply for his people. But the archangel Michael is more superior than the rest of them. And the Bible said that he's coming back with the trump of God and with the voice of the archangel. And when the Lord shall descend, Michael's going to sound an alarm. That voice is going to my God. That voice is going to be heard. That trumpet will sound. And the, and the voice of the archangel and that innumerable a company of angels are going to sound. And they're going to set this world on fire. Mm-hmm. Everybody taking vigil on them that know not God and have not obeyed the testimony of Jesus Christ 
And so there's absolutely a hierarchy in that regard that there is one who has been made the chief or the commander or the prince over uh, God's host. And so um, it's definitely in the scripture. And so we thank God for his word. Hope that gave you the answer that you desire in Jesus' name. All right? All right, put your hands together one more time. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, any announcements, anything that we need to know? Praise the Lord.